So uh, yesterday, uh, we managed to do the HIPPO, um, a breakfast search uh, pathfinding to the player. So let's just take a look how the game is. So um, this is how the game looks like. Look at that, the hippo is chasing me. Oh no, oh no. Actually, that's, that's pretty scary actually. Look at that, look at that. Whoa. So now the hippo is just chasing me. I And you can see that the animation is uh, not exactly that. Okay, so let's just on the global light. Okay, and then we uh, make the... What do you call that? We make the... The camera view a larger area so that we can see the entire screen so let's see um let's see where's my camera ah there we go the size i'll make it 10. Ah, so you can see the entire thing so you can see that right now uh, this is what is happening if i click play all right if i click play then um okay that's a bit of lag due to the twitch streaming but yeah, it should be fine. Okay. <laughs> it's lagging. Okay, yeah, now it's working. So you can see that the hippo is chasing the player and the hippo cannot pass through the obstacles. So the pathfinding will make the hippo find the shortest path to the player using breakfast search. Uh, this can be implemented using A star search as well. Okay, which will be the topic of another day, I guess. Yeah, so right now, uh, what I need to do is to implement more states for the hippo. You see, now the hippo is changing the player pretty well. And actually, um, my friend Min Hien, who is also one of the people creating this game with me, has uh, implemented an auto um, detection of the obstacle. So previously, so okay, this was my breakfast search just to run through uh, with people who didn't see it like, yesterday. So um, basically, we find where the player is, and then um, what we do is okay. There's this new function called get obstac get obstacles, which is what uh, Minhyang created in order to find out which sprites contain the trees, and then if the town name is a tree tree, okay, um, that's the shadow of the tree and will not be included, okay. But if let's say we do have a tau in the tau base, um, if we do have a tau in the second layer here. Okay, so I have to remove the ground for you all to see what's. So this is the second layer over here. And um, anything in this second layer is considered an obstacle if it's, uh, if it's not now, except the shadow of the tree, which is this tree tree sprite here. So essentially what this code is doing is just taking all these squares that have obstacles. Okay, and then as long as it is within the bounds, okay, we add this quartz, we add the X, and y so this quartz is a list of is a string okay and then later on once we do the um, movement for the breath search, first search initially i hard coded my obstacles here as a x and y but right now um what can be done is you can split by the semicolon okay which will give us the x and y coordinates respectively it's quite an elegant piece of code to use a string in order to encode a tuple yeah, I didn't think of that. I mean, I would have just done an X area and Y area like this. Yeah, and then after that, we can then set this square to is visitor is true. When we set is visitor is true, basically, uh, if the breath search ever goes into that node while we empty the queue, it will skip that node. And essentially, it will mean that that path will not be chosen. So yeah, um, that's all that we've seen so far. Uh, right now, what I want to do first is that... Um, over here in the to-do, I put this add animations based on hippo direction. So um, that's what we'll be doing first before we do the hippo st state machine. So how do we add the animations? Uh, we need an animator. So let's just put back the ground layer first. Okay, so yeah. I, if you have any questions at any point of time, um, I'm monitoring the chat. So, you know, just feel free to type there if you want to clarify anything. Yeah. Okay, so now let's do the animation for the hippo. So this was uh, done um, again by, it was Amelia. I can't remember the, the name, but yeah, it should be her. Yeah, it's quite, quite nice hippo, original art here. I can never do pixel art like this. <laughs> yeah. So over here, we have uh, hippo states here. And there's this 
animation tree here that is from hippo idle to a blend tree here which goes from left up down left right okay so um this was originally created um but let's not use that okay so there's this few animations here idle walk down walk left walk right walk up okay and then this idle down i'm not too sure whether this is for the, the hippo or not let's just take a look what the sprite is no this is for the player yeah so this is for the player you can see that this is a player sprite so the hippo uh, animation um there are four of them the idle which is just one uh sprite itself idle walk down walk left walk right walk up all these have been spliced from the spreadsheet of the hippo here. So this is the hippo. Uh, walk up, walk, walk down, walk left, walk right. Yeah, these are just the sprites. Okay, so let's see. Okay, let's see for walk down. Look at the sprite. You can see that it's like one, two. Okay trying to compress this remember there's a way to also there's only three spikes one two three yeah so i'm not exactly sure whether this is yeah The third sprite and the second sprite is the same, which is confusing. Okay, let's just see what is done for walk left, walk right. So I assume that actually we just needed two sprites, but then uh, we need a length of maybe like this is uh, 10 seconds. I mean, this is based on the frame rate, so we can adjust the frame rate here later. So 10 seconds of uh, one sprite here and 10 seconds of another sprite here. So yeah, this 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 will be fine. Okay, let's just create the animator for the enemy. So I'll create another one. Animation controller. Enemy new. Okay, I don't want to override the original one. I'll just call it enemy new. And then in this enemy new, you can see. Okay, we will do entry to exit. So we can put the hippo idle as entry. Okay, and then Basically, once we enter the animation controller, the first state you will go is a hippo idle state. If we take a look at the hippo idle, you will see that the hippo idle is just the sprite of the hippo itself, this small sprite. Okay, so then after that, we will then transit. Okay, I wouldn't use a blend tree, okay, like the original one, because I just need very, very simple triggers that will link to my code itself. So we have a walk down, hippo walk down, walk left walk right walk up okay and all these states right is linked to idle so basically when the hippo is not moving the state will be idle if not then it will be a trigger that will go into uh, walk left walk right walk down or walk up based on the code requirements so let me just add the transition first add the transition here to walk down the transition to walk left and the transition yeah so the moment when we have the hippo going like so over here in the code whenever the hippo is uh, done moving okay if the hippo is done moving over here still moving is possible we will then call in the idle animation okay so we don't have to code the idle animation at the beginning because at the beginning, once we enter the animation state tree, it will be um, going to hippo idle already. So what we want to do is after the hippo stops moving, we call in the idle animation here. So uh, before I just forget, like I'm just going to put all the required animations down here. Like I'll put them as to do so that we know what to do later. So here we have a to do. Or actually, I could just, you know, do another list of directions. So if direction is zero, that means don't move. We remain idle. But if the direction is one, two, three, four, 
Okay. Let me just copy and paste this entire thing. So this one is to to do set up the animations based on people direction. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Okay, so we need to transit from the idle state into this walk down, walk left, walk right, walk up animations. And then after that, we will need to transit back again. Let me just check whether I can hear myself. Okay, yep, yeah, I can. So from this walk up, walk right, walk left, walk down, okay, we will then transit back, all right? We'll transit back to idle when uh, when we are done with our animation. So let's just make the transition back. Okay, so over here in this transition, okay, we can add some parameters. So a parameter, maybe we can add a parameter called walk down and we add this as a trigger. So all this will be, will be triggers. So we can add multiple triggers. So like here, walk down, walk right. So, oops, walk right. Walk left, trigger, and then walk up. Then after that, we will have a idle trigger as well. Yeah. So over here, when we transit down to, um, has exit time? No, no exit time. Let me just see. Settings. There's no transition duration for this. When we transit from idle to the walking animation, there's no. Transition needs at least one condition or an exit time to be valid. Okay, so we don't want an exit time. Uh, we set the duration to zero, so there will be an immediate transition to the idle state. Okay, and uh, what we want to do in the conditions, we want to transit on walk down. So when this uh, walk down trigger is activated, it will trigger the state from idle straight away to walk down. Okay, so we do the same thing for all of them. Okay, the transition will be zero and this one will be walk left. Okay, so this walk left, no exit time. Okay, no exit time means uh, you don't have to like delay at all. Or I can also put hex exit time and then the transition make it zero. Yeah. But no exit time ensures that you don't you don't have any animation. Um you don't have to wait for this animation to finish before you transit. Which in this case you don't have to worry because uh, idle animation is just one frame of the hippo standing still so i don't have to uncheck there has exit time I'm just doing this uh just to be complete so walk up here so actually from any state i can do a trigger also to so maybe i don't have to do okay i wonder if i can delete this Seems like I can't, maybe I have to press the delete button. Can't seem to delete the transition. Okay, uh, let's just... How to delete transition in animation controller. There we go. Backspace key, so I can. Oh, yeah. I use function delete on Mac. Yeah, so because you see over here, there's this any state here. 
I can just make any state transition to keep idle. So I don't have to do the, the idle transition all the time. So over here, the condition, okay, there's also no transition time for this. Okay, you don't want to have any transition offset. Uh, and this one can be idle. So the moment the idle transition, the, the trigger is made for idle, regardless of whatever state that we have, um, it will go back into hippo idle. So this is the any state. So rather than doing like four um, arrows down here, I can also do an idle like that. Yeah, so um, that's what we have to do for the transition. Walk right, walk uh, left, walk up, walk down. Okay, and then actually I will let to check whether all these are looped. So if you look at the, um, we want to make sure that this is looped so that you will see the, the hippo moving. So there's a walk down, walk, all these are looped already. We just make sure that loop time is picked. This one loop time may or may not be ticked because it's only one frame. So even if it doesn't loop, it will still show the right frame itself. Okay, so that's what we have for the animator. So the animator itself, we will need to put here. This so the enemy controller, I'll just put as enemy new. Okay, so it's under the component animator. So let's just Google again, like Unity, how to set trigger animator from code. Okay, so we can use a script to set the trigger for the animator. So this allows you to activate an animation trigger to cause a flow in the state machine of an animator controller. Okay, so first up, we will need to get the component of animator attached to the game object. Okay, after that, um, that animator itself, we will need to do a, a set trigger. I wonder why it's reset trigger. Do I need to reset it after I set the trigger? Let's take a look. Selecting as a trigger to once it's unlike boost trigger has a true option, which automatically returns back to false. So is it is it like a boolean that has a auto false return? No, that's what I actually wanted. Yeah. So we looks like we don't have to do a a reset trigger. Okay, we just need to do the set trigger. All right. So let's get coded. Uh, let's code this. So first up. I just wonder whether I need to. Um, no, I don't have to. I'm just seeing whether I need to add in any more, like include scripts at the top. Uh, looks like I don't have to. So um, what I can do now is I can just have an animator. My anim. Let's call it my anim at the start. My anim equals to get component animator. Okay, that um, I think that's all. I mean, if you look at the example code, it is exactly the same. Okay, and then what we do is, we just need to set the right triggers here. So, my anim dot set trigger, and then the the word. So over here, our triggers that we have are walk down, walk right, walk left, walk up. Okay, so set trigger, walk up. Then I will do the same thing here for walk right. Uh, this one will be walk down. And then this one will be walk left. And then I need to do, okay, this one I can take out the to-do already. I need to do one more for this to-do here. Okay, good. So basically the idle animation, I will need to trigger it. So my any not set trigger idle. Okay, so that should do the trick for all the animations. Let's see whether there's any errors. Okay, the, the animator, let's just put it here so that we can see like in real time how how the triggers go. So let's take a look. So you can see that it's going up. Okay, you can see that there's a hippo moving. So we see the trigger. Okay, <laughs> unfortunately, the trigger is too fast for us to see visually, but you can see that the hippo is is currently moving pretty well. Uh, so just seeing whether there's any. How about we cannot pass through this tree here? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think the speed of the hippo is good. 
it's slow enough and you know it kind of threatens the player okay so let's just make the player die i didn't have a chance to you know um see whether it returns to idle but um let's just see whether i can you know take away the rigid body on the player or whether i could just hide the hide the collider so that the player doesn't collide with anything and then this would mean that the hippo doesn't die i guess i mean sorry the player won't die when the hippo comes to him so you can see that the the hippo is indeed moving it looks a little choppy though like there's a bit of rough okay yeah it returns to the idle state which is what we want you can see that it returns to the idle frame okay but there's a bit of like a choppy animation in the hippo after like it's done because i i guess what we do is we return it to the idle state okay every time that the hippo has completed so it introduces a bit of choppiness in the motion because the idle state keeps appearing i guess i mean you can't really see it here but because we keep returning to the idle state there's a bit of like blurriness okay let's see whether we can solve that okay so let's Okay, so over here, maybe instead of the idle anim, okay, only when the hippo has reached the position that it wants to go, then we call the idle animation. Then in that case, we will keep playing like either left, right, up, down accordingly. Yeah, so okay, the only issue is that the, okay, let's go back to the animator controller. Okay, the only issue is that see okay, this was the wrong one okay so this was the enemy controller i'm going to the enemy new controller yeah so the only issue is that the trigger for the people walk left walk up walk down walk right okay it comes from the idle state so it means that we probably need to go back to the idle state unless okay unless we actually why not no i just delete all this okay let's just delete all this again i know i'm doing like double work here but this is to make sure that the animation flows well okay so sure we don't really need an idle state for the hippo you see the hippo will keep moving at all times okay so we can make the transition from any state to so the any state can be Can be the main one so then we, when we set the trigger we can straight away trigger regardless it doesn't need to return it we don't need to return to the idle state to trigger to the rest we can just from any state trigger to the rest so if you look at this i'll just bring the animator back here okay if we look at this okay right now we can change the settings for all this no exit time and then over here the condition will be walk down here no exit time okay condition will be walk what was this does walk left and this one over here no exit time transition duration zero okay and then here this one will be walk right and then over here we have a uh, no exit time as well transition duration will be zero okay so the previous source state all this okay we we don't really need to call this here interruption source okay this one don't need to change previous source state i guess this this don't need to change because any state will trigger here is already so let's just do this to be walked up yeah so we will set the triggers to be walk left walk down Walk right walk up so we don't have to like um, set all this um, one by one we can just trigger straight away to that respective state and then finally when we reach the destination we can set the hippo to go idle so um here we don't call in the idle animation here so um
in fact, even if I don't call the idle animation, I'm pretty sure it will still work pretty well. But uh, what I can do right now is only when the hippo has reached the target. Okay, so this is the player. Okay, right now the target is the player. So okay, let's just call because we won't want the player all the time to be the target. Okay, let's have a new transform for the okay, see this X pause and Y pause is the current um, position of the people. I want to know where's the current position of the of the target. Okay, so when we do the breakfast search, we gave the target here. So the breakfast search here will contain the target. Start pause and end pause. Okay, so very simple. So if the hippo is not moving, okay, and if the hippo is in the right position. So how do we get the right position right now is when the player X and player Y is the same as start pause and end pause. So let's just do it here. Okay. If hippo is already at target position, then, okay. So over here, the start pause and end pause, we can change this to the target. Okay, if the hippo is at the target position, all right, if the hippo is at target position, then what we'll do is set idle animation. So over here will be if player X, or well actually no, we should, we should do start pause and end pause. If start pause equals to end pause, then we can do the idle animation because uh, that means that we don't really need the hippo to move anymore. So yeah, that should do the trick for the animator. Let's see whether it works, okay? See whether there's a bit of jerkiness or not in the animation. So yeah, let's take a look. You can see it's much better now. There's less jerkiness because we have eliminate, eliminated the idle state away so it's not like after every square it goes back to the idle state you can do this animation fully and then only when oh what happened there's a bit of a lag oh i know what happened i walked out of the grid because <laughs> i'm like so sort of, um what do you call that i'm i don't have a collider so <laughs> then the hippo could not find my position and hence did not go to me yeah, looks good. The animation for the hippo looks good already. Help me, help me. Run away. Okay. So I'm quite satisfied with the hippo's animation. I'm just going to add back the collider from for my player. So the animator wise I can uh I can close the tab for the animator. We won't need it anymore. So I'll just add back the capsule collider for the player. Okay, and, and so the up down left right animation for the hippo is settled okay what we what i want to do now is to implement the rest of the state machine for the hippo itself so yeah not bad i think the animation for the hippo looks decent it looks pretty decent that's pretty scary if we have this in the dark right can be pretty scary for the player look at that people is homing to the player in the shortest path possible uh oh oh no oh no um okay the hippo ate up the player yeah so that's why the game is called Hungry Hippos. You know, you're trying to find for some treasure and then try to avoid getting eaten by the hippo. Okay, so now that we are done with the animation itself, I'll just introduce you to what my group wants to do. So um, my group wanted to do the hippo via state machine. So um, there are a few states that the hippo will be in. So the first state is unalerted. Second state is chase crystal. Third is chase player. 
fourth is detected, and five is crazy. Okay, so um, the chase player and the, the crazy state is actually the same because now we have coded the chase player state. So when the hippo is in a certain distance from the player, okay, we'll go straight to player. Okay, that's when the hippo has sensed the player. Okay, so uh, I'll need to code a few states. So um, first, let me code the unalerted state where the hippo just moves randomly without chasing anyone. So in the hippo movement itself, okay, based on what is... Okay, so the hippo is still moving, I won't change, okay? But um, based on what, because you see over here, the X pos and Y pos will be updated via this um, breakfast search here. So what we will do is for the state um, of the hippo itself, we will need to control the state over here by putting a corresponding target. So initially, okay, this is the chase player state chases to the player location. Okay, so if we have a, the player nearby the hippo, then we will chase the player. Okay, otherwise, okay, otherwise we will have the hippo go towards a last known position, which is like the crystal. So when the crystal is collected, Okay, we will want something to trigger the player or rather we want the crystal to find out the enemy move movement and okay let's see what script this uh, crystal has yeah i'm pretty sure it has a script okay if not um we need to find out what is making it disappear so it might be under the player itself okay because this crystal itself has a collider so let's take a look at the player script Maybe it's the player interaction. Okay, let's take a look at the player interaction scripts. So under the player interaction script, I'm pretty sure there's something to do with the collider tag. It is collider tag is crystal. So you can see that up here, the tag is crystal. And here the tag is crystal as well. So when we have this collider tag as the crystal, okay, then what we will do is we will make sure that um we will call a function in the enemy movement okay and update it to the, the chase crystal state so so it's very simple okay what we'll do is okay we should have a uh, we should have a anime we should have a state for the hippo so maybe in the private variable, we will have a, a state. Okay, so in this hippo state, zero will be, okay, let's just see, zero is unalerted. Zero is unalerted. One is chase crystal. Two is chase player. Three is detected. Okay, and will not be affected by flashlight. So oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Chase player detected. Okay, maybe I put it in a separate line. Zero is unalerted. Chase crystal. Chase player detected. And then the last one will be crazy. So depending on what is the state of the hippo right now, okay, then we will update the target accordingly. So if it's a crystal, then we will need to send the crystal's position to the, as the target. Chase player, then that will be the player's position as the target. So what we will need to do is also to have a target X pos and target Y pos. Okay, so the hippo state will control what is the action to be done. So we go back to this part here. Change and pause to the corresponding target. So
Okay, so if default state is two, then we have this. Okay, so we do have to have a float emboss here, and then uh, we don't have to set anything as emboss, right? Okay, so actually it seems we have emboss here. Okay, since we have emboss, I don't need this actually. We could just use emboss as our target. Okay, emboss will be the target position of where the hippo should go. Okay, so um, if the hippo is at unalert, if hippo is unalerted, then over here will be do some random movements. Okay, and then next will be uh, what do I do next? So the random movements one I can code later. So else if hippo state equals to okay so hippo state is one this one will be to chase the chase the crystals so n pause will be equals to so if the hippo state is one we will need to update Okay, so maybe what we need to do is we still need another integer current target. Okay, actually, why not we just put target x pos and target y pos, which will tell us actually when we have a trigger. So I'm just going to set a public variable here, public, okay, void, chase crystal. So when we call the chase crystal state, okay, we will want to have a integer y and integer x sorry integer x and y and then what we do is we just make the target x pause equals to x target y pause equals to y so we will store the, the current target here and then the hippo state is equals to one so when this chase crystal is called we will set the hippo state to one so the chase crystal should be called here so if the collision dot game object dot pack is crystal so what we'll do is before we destroy the collision game object okay so this script is called enemy move movement so find object of type enemy movement okay so you will find the enemy game object this script dot chase crystal okay and um, we will need to pass the crystals x and y position over here so we could just pass the crystal Actually, why not we just pass the transform? Okay, then from there we can get the position itself. So crystal, or rather collision dot game object dot transform. Actually, we must have just just do the x and y. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Collision. Oh wait a minute, it's blocked by my face. Yeah. Collision dot game object. Transform. We, we just take the transform position, uh, transform x and y position, and we send it to the chase crystal function here, which will then um, basically help to set the hippo state to 1. Okay, so whenever the, the crystal is collected, okay, there will be probably a sound over here that, that could be added. Okay, but um, the main thing is that we will change our hippo state to 1. So default hippo state will be 0. So let me just make sure that it's, it's zero by just putting it in the start of uh, start function when the script is run the hippo will by default go to hippo state zero okay once the chase crystal is caught because of this thing it will go to the hippo state one okay so that will be the okay so this target x pos and target y pos will be uh, adjusted accordingly so we do have a target x and y right now and over here we can just use target x pos okay plus target y pos times x max plus one so um this will basically just give us the crystals position that is stopped in the target x and y pos if the hippo state is one okay so uh Basically, when the hippo has reached the target endpoint, okay, 
we want it to go back to the people state is zero and go back to rent unalerted because once it reaches the endpoint if it hasn't found the player yet we want it to resume its like random patrol style okay so um this refer search start pause to end pause that um, will still be done uh, the it's just that the end pause will change according to our people state so let's just do the rest of the So this one will be to run away from the flashlight. Okay, so this one will be a confusing, a, a difficult state to code. We just leave it for later. Okay, else if default state. Uh, maybe I should use enum so that you know we could see what the zero one two three four stands for. It's too late. Uh, I mean, not. I mean, I, I think it's fine. Uh, just use numbers. So if the hippo state is four, um, this means that the hippo is a chase player, regardless of flashlight. So over here, uh, we do need a, a flashlight state. So like something to do with this, public void flashlight, okay. And then if let's say the hippo has detected the flashlight, uh, what it will do is it will probably just run away from the direction of where it was going to. So um, well, I'll, I'll think about what under the, because you see if let's say the player flashes the light and then you go up to the hippo, the hippo hits the light, I want the hippo to go in the other direction. Maybe for one square, yeah, maybe just for one square, just move away for one square. So, okay, if the hippo state, so the, if the hippo state is at four, okay, then we don't do anything, okay, because uh, in crazy state is not affected by flashlight. Okay, so um, the other states, if, if it's the other state, what we do is we have the current direction the hippo is traveling when the flashlight is being shined on it, okay? So where's my direction? The direction is oh, is the direction not a global variable? Let's see. Yeah, direction is here. Oh, my direction is not a global variable. Okay, so um, there's 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 a few ways that we could do it. Uh, we could just make the hippo move away from the player but how do we know what is away from the player okay so let's think about it okay let's think about it Okay, you think about how to code this. So the run away from the flashlight state. Hello, minion bananas. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thinking how to do the state machine for when the hippo hits the flashlight. So I'm trying, just trying to code out this game. Okay, uh, how do I know where the hippo should go after it hits the flashlight? So you know what, I will think about it later. Let's just make the, make sure that the rest can work first. Okay, so we'll do the random one first. Okay, so the chase player, regardless of flashlight, will be just simply the same as... Actually, I could just do this. Yeah, because it will just be chasing the player. Whether the, the hippo moves away because of the flashlight or not. Okay. Okay, I, I, I got it. If the hippo is hit by the flashlight, okay, what we'll do is we'll straight away make we'll make the steel moving is equals to to make the steel moving become false. 
no that's not that's not gonna cut it yeah <laughs> that's not gonna cut it so ah yes we just make the hippo stand still yeah it's easier that way yeah so uh maybe what we'll do is we'll have a timer that makes the hippo freeze in position so we, we could just set the my anim dot set trigger idle or maybe if there's a scat animation we could use the scat animation here and um what we'll do is for the hippo to stay still for a few seconds okay so Maybe we will just set countdown equals to two, maybe one, one second, two, two seconds, uh, two seconds skip. Yeah. If uh people hit by flashlight, then stay still for two seconds. Okay, so we will have to have a countdown here. Okay, so let's have a float countdown. Yeah, that, that makes things so much easier because if we were to think of where the hippo should go to, I'll need to take into account the obstacles of uh, where are all the obstacles and everything. That that could be tricky. Yeah, it'll be easier if I'll just use a, a countdown timer. Okay, so, um, so we give the player two seconds. If the hippo gets hit by the flashlight, there'll be two seconds the hippo will be stunned. And then we can just use the idle position or we could have a another sprite for the hippo where it's like stunned and then it will just stay still there for two seconds so how do we do the countdown okay that's a very good question how do we do the countdown so in the update here we could do this if countdown greater than zero okay countdown minus equals to time dot delta time okay this uh will basically just stick Thought of selling your game creation uncommon to design and program the game. Oh <laughs> no no I mean as of now I'm not really into like commercial games creation. I'm still quite uh amateur at this. Yeah. I'm more interested to like learn more stuff. And yeah. Maybe next time I'll set up like a, a course on Udemy or something once I become better. Yeah, but uh, as of now game creation is just for fun for me. Yeah, it's, it's really fun to see uh, like your ideas come into real life and I find that very exciting personally. Uh, that's why I like uh, Unity and it gives so much more options. Previously, I did games using C <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah, like program Pong or like Snake using C. Uh, but that has to be done pretty it's quite tough because it's like everything has to do with characters like letters you use letters to, to to do the game and then eventually you can control individual pixels yeah but it's hard to to control all one by one sorry do you have a platform for all the games you did yeah i i do have it yeah i can i can link you the, the link if you're interested so I have two. One is at each one is at Sima. Yeah, I think that each one is good enough. Yeah, that that's the. Yeah, I think you can just go to this. Yeah, this doesn't have everything, but it's a good sample. I could just put in the chat here. Yeah. How should I start? Uh, I. I think one way to start is to just go for a Unity course. So personally, I did this course. So it's this Udemy 2D course. This one, this one. Complete C-sharp Unity developer course. Is this the one? Yeah, correct. Laser Defender. Yeah, number with, Yeah, this is the one. So I actually learned from this. Okay, don't be scared by the price tag. <laughs> actually, it's only like 14 bucks. I can just put this in the link also. Yeah, I, I highly recommend this course. It was very interesting for me. I spent about six months doing this course and learned quite a lot of things. Yeah, so this is quite an awesome course. Yeah, after I did this course, I can code my own games already. Yeah, so it's like a very hands-on course. So next time if I do a course, it'll be something like this. So very hands-on and, you know, let people try it out. So yeah, do, do check it out if you're interested. Yeah. I mean, coding, you don't have to learn that much yet. 
because um, I think it's more of like how to use the game engine that matters. Okay, the coding part. If you are doing more advanced game like games like like me right now, enemy AI and AI and stuff, then you learn the code. Okay, then you learn how to um, code more stuff in C sharp. Okay, for me, I I'm not a C sharp native. I use mainly Python, C plus plus. So um, to me, transitioning to C sharp is just a matter of looking at the reference documents and trying to find out what are the similar functions that I already know from other languages. Uh, I would say that programming is quite generic. If you use the uh, OOP languages, object-oriented programming languages, it's quite easy to transition from one to the other. Uh, so just start coding, uh, code in whatever language you want. But eventually, if you are using Unity, you will need to learn C sharp. Okay, uh, let me get back to the game. Okay, so where was I? Uh, yes, I was doing the countdown timer. So, so I wonder, once we have this flashlight thing, we want the idle trigger to be set. We want to set like a two-second countdown. So maybe I do this countdown equals to stun time. Okay, so stun time will be a public variable. So public floats stun time equals to 2f. So we, we can set this. Yeah, I, I, I like the guy, Ben Tristan, yeah. No, they are so engaging, I, I kind of got, I bought all their courses. I just didn't have time to finish. Yeah, so my next up in Unity, because now I have a little kid to take care of, uh, once he goes to childcare, I will continue my Unity learning. I want to learn how to create multiplayer games. So like by next year, I want to create something similar to Mobile Legends. Yeah, so that's my one of my aims. Yeah multiplayer real-time games like real-time strategy games yeah. but of course my art won't be as great as mobile legends they do have very professional artists there so it'll be very simple like paint based art but you get the idea multiplayer games yeah that's something that is very interesting for me and it's very hard to do so far all my games i created are all single player games they are much easier. Multiplayer, you have to do a lot more unless you, you do something like uh, Unity uh, PUN, I think it's P-U-N, Photon Unity Network. Yeah, that can help you do multiplayer games. But it's only free for like maybe four to, I can't remember the max number of people that can play that game at one time, maybe 10 people. After that, you need, a, you need to go and buy a, a license from them for more people. So yeah, multiplayer games, you need to pay in order to expand to more people, unless you do the entire backend code yourself, which is quite painful. Yeah, but anyway, back to the game here, we have this countdown thing. So countdown minus equals to time dot delta time. Okay. So if the countdown is greater than zero, this happens and then we return. So we do not process anything else. If the, if people is stunned, uh, do not need to do anything else. Okay, so this is the main thing. So when the countdown reaches to uh, like negative or it reaches zero, then we can move on to the next part of the code. Okay, so yeah, that's what it means by getting stunned by the, the flashlight. Okay, so yeah, so flashlight and detected. Okay, hippo will run away in other opposite direction. I'm just going to change it. Hippo will be stunned, okay, and then return to unalerted. So return to unalerted means that it won't change the player anymore. So if we return to unalerted, what we need to do is we just need to set the hippo state equals to zero over here. Okay, so instead of running to the opposite direction, which would be potentially problemat problematic to code, because I need to cater for like all the obstacles and everything to determine what's the opposite position. I just let the hippo stand there. All right. But I probably should make the hippo go back to like a certain X and Y position. If not, it will, if not, it might not know where, where its current position is. So I think maybe what I need to do is I need to, If it's still moving, 
Okay, then I should let it continue moving. I should let it continue moving. Hmm, okay, this is tricky. I think it's okay. Because uh, even if the hippo state returns to zero, reverse the breakfast search. Hmm. There's a way to do it. Yeah, what we could do is maybe to store the last position of the breast passage and then go to the last position. Yeah, that is possible. That is possible. So I might, if, if I want to do this, I will need to have another variable here that uh, stores in the past history of where the hippo has been. And then we could just go back to that last position, like maybe three moves ago or something like that. Yeah, go back to the last position. But you see, after you go back to the last position, the hippo will attack the player straight away, which is not ideal. So, so you think we shouldn't stun the player, right? I mean, sorry, you think we shouldn't stun the hippo. We just made, made the hippo backtrack. Is that what you're thinking? I mean, we, we, we could try We could try to do that, so... Okay, so what is my last position? So yeah, but anyway, if it if it goes back to the last position, uh, what will happen is that it would just mm, let me think. Okay, how how about this? Let's just make it stand first. Okay, we just make it stand first. And because I think if we make it stun, it might be better. Because imagine a case where the where the player is here and the hippo, the hippo is like right below the player, about to touch the player already. And then you shine your flashlight at the hippo. Then the hippo continues to move to the next position. Because it's, it's in the middle of the still moving phase, right? So it might kill the player. Yeah, but if we make the players, if we make the hippo stun, the hippo will freeze in wherever it is. And then the player has two seconds to run away. Then the hippo will move to the to complete its animation to that square, and the player will survive. So actually, stunning the hippo is better for the player than than running to the other side, unless we unless we stop the still moving, and we go straight away to the to, to the new position. Actually, that's possible. That's possible. Uh, let me think of how to do it. Let me think of how to do it. Um. Okay, let's not stun the hippo. We just go back to the previous position. Okay, so yeah, we have a variable called previous x pause and previous y pause. Okay, now over here we don't have a stun time anymore. We don't need a stun time variable here. Okay, we just go back to the hippo's previous x and y coordinate. Okay, uh, let's see. Still moving. Then this. And pause. Okay, so over here, and pause will be equals to the. So what we need to do for the flashlight is we need to set that not only the hippo state to be zero. Okay, we also will. Okay, I don't need the set trigger here anymore. So uh, make hippo return to return to previous position and set hippo state to unalerted. Okay, so actually we just make this hippo go back to previous position first. The unalerted part can come later. Okay, so how do we do this? If the hippo is being hit by the flashlight. So that will be 0, 1, 2, 3. That will be hippo state is 3. Okay. And then after that, uh, you will want the hippo to go back to previous position. Actually, we just need to do hippo state is 3. And then we just put the still moving equals to pause. Okay. Which will cancel the current movement. Okay. And then go, go here. And then once we reach hippo state is 3, the end pause can be the previous x pause plus previous y pause 
times x max plus one. Yeah, simple as simple as that. And then we set equal to unalerted. Yeah, that that can be what we do. We just set to, so we need to set this previous x pos and previous y pos. And uh, how do we do that? Uh, it's actually very simple. Uh, in order to set this previous x pos and previous y pos, what we really need to do is we just need to set the So the hippo's previous position will be previous x pos equals to transform dot x transform dot uh, position dot x yeah so we can just store the previous position here okay and then this will be the hippo stage three two Okay, now we do have a hippo state is zero. So as of now, the hippo state is zero. Let's just uh. Okay, let let me just make it easy. We just make the end pause to be zero, which means that the hippo will return to the the bottom left corner here. Later, there I do the the random animation. I just want to see whether it kind of works first. Okay, as always, there's errors. Transform does not contain a a definition for x. Oh, does it not contain a I thought transform dot position? Oh <laughs> I answered my own question. Transform dot position. Cannot explicitly type cast float to int. Uh, enemy movement one five one. Uh cannot explicitly convert float to int. So the previous X cross was a float. Uh, sorry, it's an int. I just need to convert this to an int. Okay, done. Next, argument one cannot convert float to int. Okay, so these are all. Uh, I guess these are all. All floats. We just need to make them all integers. Next, use of unassigned local variable and pos. Where is it unassigned? Here is unassigned. One, two, three, four. Will the hippo state ever be unassigned? Zero, one, two, three, four. It's always assigned, isn't it? Let's just make this as zero. Okay, let's just see whether it works now. So by default, the hippo won't change the player at all. Okay, the hippo is there. This this is the unalerted state. We haven't coded this yet, but it will actually do a random walk. Okay, now I will just go and collect a crystal and see whether it goes to the crystal. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Hippo is moving to the crystal's position. Does it reach that? Okay. Oh, it reached the crystal's position but found no one and walked back. Okay, let's see again. Yeah, okay, it found no one and then it returned back to, to the un unalerted state. That's great. That means it's working. Okay, so now we need to code like the chase player state. So when the when does the hippo chase the player is it is when the hippo is within a certain distance from the player okay and so this cannot be done okay so if the hippo state is three the hippo needs to go to zero then can chase the player hippo state three cannot so what we do is if the hippo state is not three and not 2 and not 4. So if the hippo state is 0 or 1, only when the hippo state is 0 or 1, and then it senses the player itself, then it will go into the chase state. Okay, so we need to code here. Hippo is at unalerted or chase crystal state. And within x squares from player, 
bank change trace player. So how do we do this? We need to code if hippo state it is zero or one. So it's hippo state grade smaller equals to one. And okay, the distance. So what we do is uh player x minus Okay, how do I find out what is the current transform x position and transform y position? So the start cost is given here. So player x minus transform dot position dot x squared. Okay, I want to do a squared. Okay, but I'm not too sure how to do a square in C sharp. No, I don't want to square it. I want to do a square. Math dot power. Yeah, so we have to use the unity math f dot power. This squared, okay, plus okay, I'm not sure whether this is viewable by screen. Let me just Make sure that this is viewable on the Twitch screen. Okay. Yeah, like that. If the okay, good. So if the hippo state is unalert or chase crystal, and then this x um, difference in the player and the hippo squared for the x and y position. is smaller than let's just put it as two squares from the player mean square let's call it mean square okay then chase player and people stick oh sorry chase player is two yeah if the hippo is already at crazy we don't want to change that state so say like that smaller than mean square times mean square so here we need a number for mean square so public mean square let's just put it as two so if let's say it's within two squares away from the player two squares in uh L, in euclidean distance uh, maybe two is a bit too little maybe three squares yeah maybe let's put three squares Movement number 14, public, oh sorry, integer, mean squared. The name Y does not match the current context in line 1 to 2. Oh, uh, this should be a 2 instead. <laughs> so let's take a look. So if the player is within 3 squares from the hippo, the hippo will chase the player. Okay, yeah, that's good. And the chasing will continue all the way until you know you shine a flashlight. Or if you collect a diamond and then Okay, great. Looks like the state. Oh no, why is it still chasing the player? I thought after it reaches the Mm, that's interesting. But after it reaches the okay, so once it collects the crystal, the hippo state is one. Okay, hippo state is one. Oh, so yeah, after it collects the crystal, okay, regardless of whether or not it's far from the player. Let's see. Yeah, uh, maybe I should just make it after the chase crystal state. 
the hypostate will go to zero. Okay, that is until it senses the player. So we give the player some chance to get away from where the crystal is. Yeah, if it's chasing the player, it, yeah, it won't chase the crystal. So you see, if it, if it's chasing the crystal, it doesn't chase the player. So only once it reaches the chase player, which is over here, it will stay at the chase player state. It won't go back to the chase crystal unless uh, prompted by the trigger event of the crystal. You see, now, now he's chasing me. I collect a crystal. Oh, why did it go back to the start? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, because I've made my hippo state zero straight away. Ah, okay, I got it. If uh end pause if start pause if we already have reached the end position hippo state is zero. Yeah actually it's already here. So I don't have to code it here. Okay, let's try it, let's try it again, let's try it again. Okay, let's just collect the crystal first and stay out of harm's way. Like, stay out of the... the... Okay, so let's... Hide. Oh, wow, that was close, that was close. It didn't sense the player. Let's collect another crystal and then just hide. Yeah, okay. That's great. And then if it's chase, chasing the player, if the player runs far enough, then maybe it will stop. Chase. No, actually, it wants to chase the player, it will chase all the way there until until you hit the flashlight. Yeah, let's make it that way. So I think this is good. So now I just want to check something. If I trigger the hippo to chase me, I trigger the hippo to chase me and I try and collect a crystal. Does the hippo chase the crystal or the hippo still chase me? Ah, okay, that's good. Yeah, so so we give the player some chance. If the the player collects a crystal and stays out of harm's way, then the oh, oh no, now it's chasing the player already. I think. Yeah, I came within. So once it reaches the chase player state, maybe we could have a like alert music, dong 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 dong, or something like that to let the player know that. The hippo is chasing them already. Like, ah, help me, help me, help me. Okay, now I need to code the flashlight. Okay, so if let's say the flashlight happens, the hippo will go back to unalerted. Okay, maybe three is a bit too much. But three is okay, I think three is okay. So it's like three means three squares away from the hippo. I think the hippo should be able to see further than a player, right? So 3 is okay. If you look at it, the flashlight of the player itself, the flashlight of the player itself covers about 2 squares. About 2 squares. So if the hippo sees at 3 squares, then the hippo is seeing further away from the player. So I think a hippo at 3 is good. Okay, now uh, let's just code the flashlight part. So the flashlight has a flashlight script. Let's take a look at it. So the flashlight has a script whereby when you toggle the flashlight, your collider will be enabled. Okay. So if the enemy hits the flashlight collider, so the flashlight collider is a, it's a trigger. So it'll be an on trigger enter 2D. Okay. So that's the only trigger, I suppose. So in the enemy script, 
we, we can do this uh, let's do an on trigger enter 2d so on trigger enter 2d will take in a collider 2d okay so we can actually that's that's the only trigger right so you could just do a public void actually we don't even need a public it's just void on trigger enter 2d collider 2d other okay, we don't really care about the collider because it has to be it has to be the flashlight that's the only trigger that the hippo will enter so we can just straight away set the okay this is actually the same as flashlight okay we can just we can just call flashlight when triggered by flashlight collider then change state to detected okay so maybe we don't need this public void flashlight anymore we could just you know just put this here yeah all right Let's see whether this works. So if the hippo is chasing me or chasing the player and then uh, you show a flashlight, the hippo should run away, ideally. Run. Okay, it's now going back to unalerted, but the unalerted is kind of uh, I guess it, once the flashlight battery is used up, yeah, the collider is no longer enabled. Okay, let's try again. Let's try again. Uh oh yeah, you see there's some issue with this enemy right now it's not exactly at the right position so it means that once the flashlight has been enabled here sorry it means once we have triggered the flashlight make the hippo move to previous position we don't need the still moving to be false Again, because I want the hippo to really be in an integer position rather than you know, in the middle. Yes, that's great. Okay, now it's the crystal and then I stay out of harm's way. If... Uh oh. Ah, it chased me again. So it's not a bad idea to make the hippo go back to the start point, huh? as an unalerted. <laughs> I mean, we can play test this and see how it, how it works. Okay, let's say I stand here. Oh, that was close. That was close, that was close. Almost died there. Alright, so if we reach here... Hey! Oh... No, but if it's on trigger... That means if I go into the hippo with my flashlight.
Yeah, see, if I go to the hippo in my flashlight, the hippo will run away. Uh, the hippo won't run away. It's kind of agonizing. So, so let me see the flashlight script. We need to keep toggling this collider. Yeah, unless we don't. Okay, I need to find out a way to do a how to do continuous trigger. Okay, I guess it means that in the hippo, uh Okay, in the hippo I probably will add in how to make trigger continuous. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's right. On triggers they would do the job. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a, that's a smart one. That's a smart one. Yes, on trigger stay will be good. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Okay, the only thing is if the hippo is moving towards the player, okay, the hippo will complete the this the square is moving on, and this might kill the player. Oh, where's my flashlight? So fast the flashlight died already. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the hippo actually had to complete its transition. Yeah, I guess it's fine. I mean, if you, you shine it too near, did it? <laughs> if you shine it too near, you can actually die. Yeah, so I'm just thinking, okay, how do I make the hippo, okay, not chase the player and like go away so we could just do this okay maybe for the flashlight we put still moving equals to force over here okay and then the hippo state will be three and that hippo state is three and pause will be this Hmm. Maybe move two states back. Okay, I'll just have a previous two pause. Yeah, we could also call no but I want the hippo to go away immediately so that when the hippo is transiting it doesn't like go all the way to the player. Ah, uh, there we go. Oops. Yeah, you know what? I think this is a bit too much. Let let's just make the player. You know. Let's see. I want the animation to continue. It's just that if we don't make the still moving complete, 
then there will be some issues later on because the hippo is not at the right position. Uh, maybe we could stun the hippo first, then complete the steel moving later. I mean, we could do a combination of both. So what we could do is we could stun the hippo here. I think we still need to stun the hippo after all. So stun hippo, then make hippo return to previous. Yeah. I think don't even need to return to previous position actually. Yeah, but we see how it goes first. Uh, stun the hippo first. So public stun time equals to two f. Then we have a private countdown. Countdown equals to zero. Okay, so. So when we have this uh, countdown will be equal to stun time. Okay, then when we go to update, it countdown greater than zero. Okay, then countdown minus equals to time dot delta time. Okay, and uh, then we will return. Okay, so we have a stun tag for the hippo. Okay, 15 invalid token in class, 1521. I forgot to create the float again. <laughs> yep, okay, that, that, should, that should do the trick. That should do the trick. I want Hippo to stand for like two seconds when you use the flashlight. Oh, wow, what happened? Okay, maybe let's not go back to the previous position. Yeah, causing some issues here. So let's see. Yeah, let's just stun it and return to unalerted. Oh, because the previous pause, I took it away, right? Uh, actually, I don't need a de detected state then. Yeah. yeah, we don't really need a detected state. Okay, just put it here. We just let the hip let the hippo stun and then go back to unalerted. Yeah, just like that we do. So if Post it is crazy and not affected by flashlight. Okay, that's good. I just have eat. what's this? One five eight. Okay, we don't need this anymore. We don't need this position. Okay. Hmm, where's the hippo going to? Okay, I don't need to set the steel moving here. Okay, so hopefully this will, will make it fine. 
three return and then we count down for stun time. Maybe stun time can be one second. Two is two feels a little long, and then we can set the animation to be idle. Okay, uh, my anim dot set trigger idle. Then once the stun has been cleared, then the hippo will move again. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I like it how it just stays still. Quite hard actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I've seen a potential issue. After the the hippo goes back to the still moving phase, we lost the set trigger here already. Hmm, let's see. How do I do this? How do I get the animation back for the hippo when he has like been frozen by the flashlight? Okay, one way is to stop the frame here of the animation. Okay, animation set frame click to zero. Instead of setting the idle animation, we could just make the frame rate like freeze animation. Yeah, maybe that will be better. Freezing animation. Yeah, let's just set the speed to zero. Then like once we return back to okay. Very nice. Now it freezes meat frame in this walking animation. Oh yo, look at that. <laughs> I like how it just stays still with. That's that's great. Look. And the player can unknowingly walk into the hippo. <laughs> Whoa, run, run, Rick. Now you see me, now you don't. The hippo state will be written to zero. And yeah, that's great. Okay, so uh for the random position, right now this one we need to we need to code it. So 
what we could do is to do this uh Okay, we need to find out whether or not the okay so i got an idea we'll just do a random uh, movement here so we do have the hippos x and y position here so all these are guaranteed to be integers okay so if the end pass will just be a random of x y and it could also go out of the grid, I guess. Yeah. So maybe what what would happen is okay. I need the least of. I need the least of obstacles. So the list of obstacles is here, obstacle chords. And obstacle chords is a string. And then we could have this. In the start coordinate here, after we collect our obstacle chords, we could do this. We could do this. We have a is obstacle here. So we have a private uh, booth. Equals to new bull. I can use the same as the code down there. Equals to new bull. Sixteen times seven. Yeah. So if it's an obstacle, then it'll be true. Okay. So very simple for this. Uh, okay. So over here will be new x pos plus new y pos times x max plus one. Okay, so it'll be very simple. Uh, we'll just do a while is obstacle and pos. Okay, so if this is true, then we the one. If this is true, then we keep doing this. Do this while wow, we have this. So our n pos will be equals to this new x pos new y pos. So random dot range. Okay, zero to four. So this will give integer new pos integer new direction equals to this. If new direction is equals to zero. And so I will want to do this, um, do a similar one to this here. One, two, three, four. So we will need to get the current x and current y. Okay. If new direction is zero, okay, we do something else. If we do something. New direction is two, we do something else. New direction is three, we do something. Okay, so this one will be up, right, down, left. Okay, so if the direction is, so as long as it's not an obstacle, we'll move there. So if the direction is zero, 
Okay, what we'll do is we will do zero is up, right? So yeah, we could do this new x plus 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 uh and okay, if it's up and the new x post must be smaller than x max sorry new y post must be smaller than y max okay right will be new y post new x post be smaller than x max this one will be new at y pos greater than y min and this one will be new x pos greater than x min so this will ensure the boundary conditions are met and here we just add in this Yeah, we do this so that uh, only when n pos is greater than equal to zero then and we then we will bother to do this So if, if this does not fulfill, then n pos will be minus one, and then we have to make sure that our n pos smaller than zero. Or this, yeah. So the moment when this condition is fulfilled, we will keep doing the loop. Okay, and then uh, here up up will increase y pos by one. Right will increase x pos by one. Down will decrease y pos by one, and left will decrease x pos by one. Yeah, so that that should be good. Yeah, I've got to go soon, lady. Anyway, I think this should be breaks ready. So we do a random position of up, down, left, right, and then if it doesn't fulfill the boundary conditions, you set as minus one. Okay. We keep looping and looping until we reach a position that we can go to. Okay, let's see the errors. Invalid number 150. Okay. 166, semicolon expected. This one. Okay, looks good. Not convert from float to ins. Yeah, let's just do this like that. Okay, looks alright. One four one six six cannot implicit convert type. Float to ins. Yeah, we just need to do this. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're using the Unity engine dot random. Let's see how to do it. Random dot range. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be explicit and just say Unity Engine. Okay, yep. That's done. Okay, now we just see whether it works for. Yeah, looks like it's working. The random is working. We will just randomly move. Do you like find something? Oh, is the hippo chasing the player already? Oh, that was fast. Okay, it looks like the uh, hippo is working. So the hippo is now moving randomly. Well, it's quite terrifying actually. The, the random speed is pretty fast. Great, I guess, for the suspense of this game. So it's like you can see it's randomly moving up, down, left, right until like it hits a if, if it doesn't hit the obstacle, it will move to that path. Let me just make the hippo chase me. Oh, it goes to the... Has he found me? No, he hasn't found it. Chase the crystal. Okay, he didn't chase the player. Let me just go near. Okay, now he's chasing me. Wait. He didn't choose the player. Why? It's supposed to chase the player. Somehow it's not chasing the player. So Oh, this is why no wonder yeah, there's something wrong with this. Let's try again. Okay, now it's chasing the player. Okay, good. The hippo looks like it's chasing me. And now it should not chase me. It should be random. Only once it randomly goes to me, then yes, then it will chase me. Look at that, look at that, look at that chasing. Oh, that's scary. Run! Oh, I think this is pretty scary again. Oh, I died. Okay, that's great. I think it looks pretty nice already. Let's just take away the global lights. Um, we do the player's camera, the camera on the player to be at 0.5 again. Okay, so now what's lacking is like a UI for the the flashlight itself. So now we can we can play from the player's perfect perspective. Now I'm trying to find the crystal. Where's the crystal? Oh wow! Oh, I just saw. Oh, that was really scary. My heart jumped a bit actually. Where are the crystals? Where are the crystals? There's the crystal. There's another one. Oh wow! Oh, okay. So actually, right now we are just missing the last part, where the hippo can turn crazy. So when the hippo turns crazy is when the hippo has collected all the uh crystals. So we could have a public void crazy, where we just make hippo state equals to 
three directly. So over here, the crazy position will be If crystal collected is two, then we just you know find this. Yeah. So uh, this is the crazy state that the hippo will be in if we collect all the crystals. And let's try it out. So it means that once the we have collected all the crystals, the flashlight won't work on the hippo anymore. Let's just try it out. Yes, okay. It's great. If crystal collected equals to number of crystals. Ah, okay, yep. Okay, it looks like the script is working. Let me just try it out again since I changed the variable. So only when the crystals is the number of crystals, the flashlight wouldn't work anymore. So the flashlight wouldn't deter the hippo anymore. The hippo will just come in with come come with killing intent to the players, you know? Now the hippo stops when you put the flashlight, which is pretty freaky actually if you ask me. Oh man. Okay, now Oh like okay, so that's great. I think this game is pretty scary actually. <laughs> Look at my face, it's getting darker and darker and darker as I could. Yeah, okay, so anyway, uh, we have coded the state trees for the hippo. I think we're more or less done with all the hippo's animation states. So I've managed to code all this out today. It's uh, quite a good feat, actually, I feel. Yeah, so the hippo states have all been coded, and uh, the animation for the hippo is done as well. And yeah, we'll continue again probably next week. Yeah, but I think this is good. I, if I can have, find a time, like uh, sometime during the week, next week, I will try to code out the A star for the hippo. Yeah. So, yeah. After that, probably the hippo game should be done by next week. And then I will return back to my other game for buttons. Yeah, thanks Minhyun for, for doing all the groundwork. Like, all this actually 90% of it was done by him. And yeah. So I hope um, today like you can learn something about how to do state machines using code and using animation. I've got to go, and yeah, I'll see you all again next week. Okay, bye-bye.